Hello and welcome to the inside of the brand new Mahindra Scorpio N. My name is Chiro De Siena. This is the Cars at Coza YouTube channel and I'm about to tell you many things about this car. But before I do, make sure you go and check out our brand new app. It's free in your app store, Huawei, Apple and Android. I'm telling you, you won't regret it. Right, here we go. A full review of the new Mahindra. Dream, search, drive. Cars.coza. Whether you're an angel, a dictator, a space captain, a tree, or just Archie! If your car is stolen, we'll help you replace it. Oh, it's still Archie's car, man. With no drama. Budget, the official insurer of good South Africans. Right, let's start with the basics here. What is this? Well, it is another entrant into the Bucky-based SUV market, which is a segment currently ruled, well, ruled forever by the Toyota Fortuna. Although we do have the new Everest that's come along, although that has gone up in price big time. And then you've got other cars like the Mitsubishi Pajero Sport, for instance, and the Isuzu MUX. So this is Mahindra's entrant into this Bucky-based segment. So let me put this car in context for you. Interestingly, it's taller and wider than a Toyota Fortuna, and it's only 13 centimeters shorter. It's a proper seven-seater, so this is actually quite a large car. It's about the same size as any other adventure SUV that's on the market. Well, maybe not the Everest, that's grown quite a lot, but the key car in that segment is the Fortuna. That's the car that everything gets compared to. So let's just compare it to that. Something I want to get across right up front is how affordable the Scorpio N is. The bottom of the range, it's a 4x2 auto, that comes in at 460,000 Rand, which I'm not kidding, is 200,000 Rand cheaper than the cheapest auto 4x2 Fortuna. 200,000 Rand. So you could buy a Scorpio N and a Hyundai Atos, you know, just have a spare Atos lying around if you wanted for the same money. But I am driving the top spec ZL8. This is the one with all the bells and whistles. It's got full low range, it's full four x four. This one comes in at 590,000. But still, that is 90,000 Rand cheaper than a four x four, sorry, a four x two Fortuna Auto with a 2.4 liter engine. Now, when we were deciding to test this car, we thought, should we take it out for by fouring? And the reality here is that Mahindra is chasing the lifestyle market. Mahindra was known for more sort of agricultural, robust vehicles. But with this car and the touchscreen and all the rest of it, they are going after the lifestyle market. And I don't think many lifestyle 4x4 owners do very much hardcore driving, hardcore 4 by 4 -ing. What they do is this gravel roads on the way to the holiday destination. So we thought we'd bring it out to a gravel road out here and give it a test. Now I've been up and down here, we shot some stuff for the cameras earlier, and I was really impressed with how this car held up. Obviously you've got those nice big high sidewall tires, that's really important for comfort on gravel roads, but no rattles or squeaks, the build quality is impressive throughout, and it's just handling this horribly rutted road really, really well. Feels like I'm in control. Yeah, no real complaints here. I think if you have to do long distances on gravel roads, I think you'll be as comfortable in this as you would be in a Fortuna. And we're back on tar. And this allows me to highlight something that is quite impressive about the Mahindra. Yes, it's a little bit roly-poly, does sort of, you know, lean on its door handles a bit in the corner, very soft 4x4 biased suspension. But what you do get on tar roads is a very smooth and high quality ride. I'm actually really impressed by this, to be honest. It does have some clever trickery in the dampers, something about frequency dependent damping, which I must be completely honest with you, I don't understand, I've never heard of it before, but it is a first in segment for this car. 
And something else about the ride on the road, which I really like, is it has over-assisted steering. The power steering is completely over-assisted, but that means that you get this very, very light, very effortless driving feel when you're cruising around town. And the thing is, usually if steering is over-assisted, then when you're on the highway, you tend to have to put in lots of small adjustments to keep the car on the straight and narrow. And that's not the case with this car. The steering is very direct. It's not vague. So that's really impressive. That's mission accomplished, I think, for the drivetrain engineers. Underneath the bonnet, 2.2 litre turbocharged four cylinder petrol diesel with very decent power and torque. 129 kilowatts and 400 newton meters. That newton meter figure is exactly the same as what you'd get in the 2.4 engine in the Toyota Fortuna, but it's about 20% more power over the Toyota Fortuna. And that you can really feel. Your power runs to all four wheels through a six-speed auto. It's a good old-fashioned slush box, but there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. For me, the mark of a good gearbox is one that you don't even know it's there. And that's pretty much the experience that I've had with this new Scorpio. Mm. Around town, I've been enjoying it. Uh, out here on the open road, out here in the farmlands, it's performing well as well. The last Scorpio, in my opinion, felt a little bit underpowered, but this one, they've sorted that out, and I don't think you'll be wanting for power. Look, if you really want your 150 kilowatts, then you gotta get the 2.8 from the Toyota Fortuna. But compared to the 2.4, this is a better engine. Now keep in mind that this, the top spec Z8L Scorpio N, is nearly 90,000 Rand cheaper than the lowest spec Toyota Fortuna, the 2.4. And then it really starts to look like good value because there's quite a bit of kit in here as standard that you won't find in the Fortuna. So for instance, in the Fortuna, you don't get a front camera. In here, you do. You don't get automatic wipers or lights in the Fortuna. In here, you do as well. And there's things like terrain response response, which is quite fancy. It's sort of Land Rover-esque. You operate that down here. And generally speaking, it's just a well-specced, well-put-together cabin. You've got a 3D immersive sound system from Sony, touchscreen infotainment with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, two USB ports down here, a wireless phone charger. Again, another thing you won't get in the Fortuna. You've got a cooled glove box, which is pretty cool. That's a nice thing for when you're adventuring. In front of the driver, two dials with a nice big digital section in the middle, multifunction steering wheel. Unfortunately, the steering wheel only adjusts for rake and not for reach which is maybe a bit of an oversight. Start stop button over here on my right. You've got keyless entry as well, electric mirrors, electric windows all around, a nice bottle pocket down here in the door, one drinks holder over here. And then I know South Africans love these. I've never been a huge fan, but you do have your sunroof. Automatic climate control, dual zone, you won't find that in the Fortuna as well. This switch gear is really nicely designed and made of a nice material as well. Hill descent control, that's where you turn, turn off your auto stop start, which is important. And that's where you activate your cameras. I'm really quite a big fan of the seats. They're very supportive. They're a little bit bucket-like as well, but they do feel like the sort of seats that you could do pretty long distances in as well. I've enjoyed them just commuting around the city. Usually I'm not a fan of brown leather, but this tone of brown and in this sort of car, it, it actually works. And if you want to see all of this information really quickly, really easily, use the compare tool in our completely free app. It's available in your app store right now. You can add up to four cars at a time and you can compare everything down to how long the car is to how long the service plan is. And that brings me neatly onto this car's service plan versus the Toyota Fortuna. So you've got five years, 150,000 kilometer warranty in here versus the three year, 100,000 in the Fortuna. Although the service plans are quite similar, five year and nine services in the Toyota, five year, 100,000 kilometers in the Mahindra. So that warranty is definitely quite good value on top of the Toyota.
Right, the back seats. Let's start off with this thing, which is a lap belt for the center passenger. I know you guys don't like this. It really should be a three-pointer. It's a bit unfortunate that, but other than that, I am fairly impressed with the back bench. Um, knee room, not amazing. That's my driving position. I'm five foot nine ish i like to think i'm taller but i'm not i do sort of recline a bit though with my seat so you probably get a little bit more with your average driver but it's not that much worse or better than you will get in something like a fortuna what i am quite impressed with though is headroom and i don't know if you saw our ford everest review but these bucky based suvs they tend to have this problem in the back where there isn't enough headroom just because of how the, the chassis is designed but here i'm pretty good in the everest i was actually hitting my head on the roof so that's pretty impressive decent spec back here with one usb port although it's a type c weirdly enough and you've got type a's in the front you do have your own aircon control back here that is quite nifty and the seats fold in a 60 40 split but yeah i could see adults and kids doing long distance in here no problem the boot door is actually a door and not a tailgate and that's not my favorite solution to get into the back of the car because imagine someone's parked close behind you or you've reversed up to a wall or something like that this just needs a lot more space to open than a vertical opening tailgate and then we get to the boot itself and this is where things start to get well it's not as well thought out i think as you would hope so with your third row of seats in place there's obviously almost no boot this tumbles quite easily just two straps and it's sprung loaded and it folds up into place now you have quite a decent sized boot i'll give it that and i'll quickly show you with the cooler box ah the director obviously got the heaviest cooler box he could find so i mean that's pretty decent space right but here are some big issues that thing is not removable unless you get some serious spanners and you actually unbolt the thing from the chassis of the car you do tie it up using this little strap over here and then for me the biggest problem there's no parcel shelf so there's just nowhere secure or safe or out of sight to leave anything and this happens often with seven seater cars i see it all the time with seven seater cars there's no parcel shelf and i really think the manufacturers need to come up with a solution for that now i'm sure you're interested in fuel consumption of course you are and at the moment indicated consumption is 11.1 liters to the 100. now that's not amazing it's not bad though and i think it will get better on the open road almost certainly drop below 10 and again that's pretty much in line with what i have experienced in the toyota fortuna so nothing too much out of line there with the competition so should you buy a Mahindra Scorpio N? Well, to be honest, I can't see why you shouldn't. If you're looking for an adventure SUV with full 4x4, low range as well, seven seats, at this price, under 600 grand for the top spec, 460 for the entry level 4x2. I mean, look at the market. Top spec Fortuna, nearly a million rand. Everest, over a million rand. MUX 900,000 Rand. I mean, that's, that's what you're spending if you want all of these bells and whistles in one of the other brands. And the thing is, Mahindra, maybe you don't have experience of them, but the company is 70 years old, 80 years old actually. They've been in South Africa 18 years and they have 74 dealerships in South Africa. It's quite a big company now. So I think your backup will be okay on this. The warranty is really good. And the thing is, it's not just a good car at the price, it's a good car and it comes in at a good price. I think there's a big difference there. Are you busy trying to decide between two cars, three cars, four cars, five cars, six cars? We have an excellent compare tool on our site, which will help you make sense of all the different pricing and all the different specs. You'll find it on our main site, as well as in our app. It's super slick, it's easy to use, it's highly detailed, it's constantly updated with the latest information and pricing, and I can guarantee you it'll make your life a ton easier. Check it out on our website, link in the description below. Cars.coza God. All our silos and archies deserve insurance that pays out.